What a fucking week in the world of wildlife news when you are the star of a podcast with Forrest Galante, <laughs> <laughs> who is obsessed with the Lazarus taxon, the thylacine, the Tasmanian tiger. We've looked for it twice all over Tasmania and Australia. Forrest is planning a third trip. And now the thylacine's in the news, man. What the fuck is going on? What oh, gives? dude. It's it's insane. It's not only in the news. It's like it's like a damn soap opera that's going on. It's a there's amazing stuff happening. So yeah, to, to dig right into it on February twenty second, the first thing I hear when I wake up in the morning, um, this guy Neil, who is I think the president of a, some group called the Thylacine Thy, <laughs> excuse me Thylacine Thyl- Awareness Group of Australia, um, which is a mouthful, um, yeah. releases this YouTube video. Right, and you're, and it's like, oh, okay, a new thylacine videos come out, whatever, um, you know, some blurry image of some thing that we're gonna get to see, but it's not that. It's just this guy Neil walking through somewhere in Tasmania with like a fence post in the background, legit holding a beer in his hand. Respect for that, and he's like, guys, I've done it. Yeah. I found the thylacine, and he goes on for like six minutes of this video, talking, six, sipping his beer and walking, and saying. You know, we're, we've got three images, two of which are a little bit blurry, but one is crystal clear. You know, the two are parents, and the crystal clear one is a baby thylacine. You can see the stripes, you can see the detail. This is it. Like, we've done it. You know, I've, I've got the thylacine proof, and I've sent it to a bunch of experts, and on March 1st, I'm going to release these images to the world. Yep. So I saw this video. I tweeted it because I was like, whoa, I was like, hold on to your hats, folks. You know, here we go. Like, this could be big. And it went, and I'm not saying because I tweeted it, but it went totally viral, like all over the place. It blew up. When I found it, it had, or when I got sent it, it had like 120 views. Now it's at like well over, you know, I think it's at a couple million or, or maybe a million. I don't know. But um, it just yeah. blew up. And by people the time just went, I, By the time I woke up, which is much later than you, Forrest, uh, I had like four or five different friends had texted me the video and I was like going to send it to you. And then I saw you had already posted. So like gotcha. you know, when I woke up at 11, it was too late. Like it had already gone. It, 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 People it, the news had broken. So, and, so not to interrupt yeah, you, but let me ask you this. Cause I, one thing I want to, I'm curious about what is the decision-making process on if you're going to retweet it or not? What did you have to think through? Like, did you think, do you know this guy? Did he seem credible? Like, or are you just excited because it's the thylacines, thylacines in the news? I mean, I had two, it's a twofold response. One is I was just excited because the thylacine is in the news, for sure. But yeah. the other was he had such sincere enthusiasm about his discovery and the fact that he said, you know, it's it's irrefutable. Like, it's yeah. crystal clear images, and I've sent it to the professionals for confirmation. You'll You'll know in a week. Like, there was not like, hey, I got this blurry photo, you know, I'm pretty sure it's a thylacine, or even like a confident, you know, like, I've heard those guys who are like, I saw one, I saw one, I'm confident, and you're like, cool, there's still no proof. This guy was like, 100%, I have proof, it's a family, you can see the baby, no question. So I was like, this is it, you know, like, uh, we all know that I believe they could still be out there in very Mm -hmm. small numbers. And so I was like, this is it, the guy's done it, you know, this is, this is huge. And so I was like, well, I got to share this with the world. Like, you know, I don't care yeah. who discovers it. I just want the world to know that it's been found. Okay. Um, but the story doesn't end there, does it, no, Patrick? No, I don't think it does. <laughs> I don't think it does. Um, so this guy, Neil, the guy who is in charge of this uh, thylacine awareness group, he sends the photos to the university, or pardon me, the Museum of Tasmania. Who works at the Museum of Tasmania? The one and only Nick Mooney. Now, Ritep, Nick Mooney is someone that Patrick and I worked with. He is considered the foremost expert on thylacine. He's a wildlife biologist from Tasmania. I worked with him in Tasmania for a couple weeks during the fires. Um, have stayed in touch with him this entire time since we first ever went looking for thylacine like four or five years ago. Super mm-hmm. cool, super credible biologist who also believes the thylacine could still be extant, you know, so he like thinks it's possible. So he's not like, a, you know, like, oh, no, going to discredit it straight away. And when Neil mentioned in the video that he'd seen the that he'd sent the images to Nick Mooney, I was like, holy crap. Like, this isn't like, oh, I sent it to my buddy Earl. And if Earl says it's a thylacine, we're good to go. (laughs) You know, this is like this is the real deal. Um, So big excitement. 
anyway, fast forward 24 hours, February 23rd, literally the next morning, Nick Mooney releases a statement. And the statement, as was in the paper, says, Nick Mooney has concluded that based on the physical characteristics shown in the photos provided by Mr. Waters, Neil Waters was his name, the animals are very unlikely to be thylacine and are most likely Tasmanian patamelon. Patamelon, uh, Will, if you could pull up a picture, are a animal that looks nothing like a thylacine. Um, and the Tasmanian, and this was the statement that the Tasmanian Museum spokesperson released from Nick Mooney. I put up a funny graphic that showed a couple of melons, you know, operating a Trojan thylacine. But um, <laughs> it was just, it was this like, this just blow, right? This like devastating like thing. And when you look at the melon, Will's pulling up a picture of one right now. That doesn't look anything like a thylacine. I mean, you, there's, no. there's mm -hmm. arguably no two animals on Earth that look more different than a thylacine <laughs> and a patamelon. So, so it was like, huh, okay, in my yeah. mind, and tell me what you guys think. In my mind, I'm like, all right, that guy, Neil, maybe had a few too many beers, got really excited about a bunch of cryptic images, sent it to a real biologist, and the real biologist went, no, 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 no. Well, I'll give you, so, I mean, honestly, that's exactly what one of our Australian fans of the podcast said, Daniel Cool, who's mm -hmm. all over this shit. And he basically said that it happens a lot. Guys out there, they, they have a few too many drinks. They get real, ex just exactly what you said. He's okay. like, that happens in Australia all the time. So before we jump past that, like, Yes, these don't look alike, right? A patty right. melon looks, I could see if you confuse that with a kangaroo or some like large rope, even a capybara or something, right? At the right, right angle. Sure. Explain to me, let's assume that this guy is not just some drunk and it was a patty. Like, how could you think a patty melon was a thylacine? Is there any part of it that you would see? I mean, it doesn't look striped or anything. No, but... You know, Patrick, how many times have we been in the field where we've pulled up an image mm. on the trail camera from the trail camera set and and six of us sit around the computer going, what the fuck is that? Right. You know, <laughs> now that's the thing that I think has gone on here. If you looked at this animal and it's hiding out, look, you know, look at the dappling. Oh, you can't see my forearm like the dappling coming mm -hmm. in from my window over here, yeah, right? If you have thinking. that dappling of shade on the back and you got this cryptic image and you're seeing the animal tracking away and the patamelon does have a, you know, like a rigid tail and you see the tail, you know, maybe mm -hmm. it's one of those things like we talk about like the Bigfoot hunters, right? When all you do, or the, the people that claim to have seen Black Panthers, when all right. you do is see a Black Panther on TV and you look at the Black Panther high school mascots and sports teams mascots and you watch the Black Panther movie and the idea of a Black Panther lives in your brain the same yeah. way the idea of a thylacine definitely lives in Neil's brain regardless of whether he's willing to accept that he might uh, project that or not. Then you see this striped cryptic thing and go, there it is, you know, yeah. I can't answer what it is definitively. I know it's a thylacine because it's striped and it's in Tasmania and it looks right-ish, you know? And mm -hmm. I think that's right. what's happened here is right. you've ended up with a projection of something. And to be clear, I totally trust Nick Mooney's opinion, but this, the saga continues. What? Oh yes, it continues. <laughs> so. Nick Mooney, super credible wildlife biologist, like I said, top of the field in Tasmania. He releases a statement to say, sorry, guys, it's not a patty melon. Well, you would think, you know, you would think the thylac thylacine awareness group, Neil and, and the likes would go, hey, our bad. Sorry to excite everybody. You know, the experts have said that it's not a thylacine. No, 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 no. Instead, the very next day, a statement was released on the Thylacine Awareness Group page that says, okay, just to be clear, yes, Nick Mooney has reported in the media that he thinks it's unlikely that the animal in our pho photograph is a thylacine. Unlikely, not definitively. Why didn't yeah. he just say it's not a thylacine? We have other expert statements that we are putting together for the photo release. Veterinarians and other cat and dog experts, none of them think our animal looks like a patamelon. It's seven against one at the moment. We didn't release the photos straight up because we wanted to provide you with a range of expert opinions before we publish, which we are still gathering. Neil was mm -hmm. bursting to tell you the news. That's why we released this video, referring to the YouTube video. Please don't waste your time with rude, aggressive comments, blah, 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 blah. And yep. then they say thanks from some guy named John. Um, so now what's happening to break it all down, 
These guys say, we've got these photos of a thylacine. They send it to eight different experts, one of whom is a very reputable known guy. And I'm not saying the other seven aren't. I just know Nick Mooney personally, and I trust right. his opinion. And one of them, the, the, the known one, Nick Mooney, comes back and says, don't think so. It's a Patamelon, guys. And the thylacine awareness group goes, well, seven other experts say it's not. So mm -hmm. now, not only do we not know the truth, so to speak, and again, I, I certainly defer to Nick Mooney, but the, the story gets bigger, right? Like right. The, the, the drama continues. Like now it's bigger. Now it's seven against one. Now the thylacine awareness group is standing by the fact that they have irrefutable evidence, even though one of the experts has said it's refutable, it's a patamelon. And uh, seven other people who these experts are is unknown to me at this time saying, yeah, I think you guys got a thylacine. So it's... um. You know, I, I I got my popcorn here, guys. I'm sitting back just waiting because things are things are going gangbusters. Now, all these photos are going to be, re be released on March 1st. I emailed Nick Mooney and asked him if I could see them. I haven't heard back yet. Nick usually responds about once every, checks email about once every two to three weeks. So I don't think it's anything personal. But right. um, you better believe I'm going to be staying up all night on the night of March 1st, or I guess leading into March 1st, waiting for that image because Australia is ahead of us. Because even if there is only a 1% chance that I align and agree with the thylacine awareness group, that's a 1% that I would like to judge for myself over anybody else's opinion. Yeah. yeah. Well, so here's what I find very interesting. Because then you, we started talking just over text about, well, what could be a reason? Let's say this, these photos get released. And did they give mm -hmm. a date when they're going to release the photos? March 1st. March 1st. Okay, so that's what, in just a couple days. Um, let's say they release the photos and they look nothing like a patty melon, right? What would be, what are some possible motivations for someone to, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things at play, right? When you have yep. people who are dedicated to these wildlife causes. Yep. Like, why would Nick maybe discredit it, like... What do you think's going on? There's some and, and that's there. a great question, right? Now, I don't want to put a whole conspiracy theory spin on this whole thing. But if I'm in Nick Mooney's shoes, right, I am the world's leading authority on this animal, so to speak. And all of a sudden, these pictures come across my desk. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm going to be flattened by it. I'm going to be floored by it. I'm going to be shocked that some guy named Neil, who's not a <laughs> you know a credible biologist, went and found these things. But that right. is oftentimes how it happens. The first thing I'm going to do, other than maybe cheersing and high-fiving, is say to myself, how am I going to protect these animals? And I can tell you what, the answer is not, let me release photos to the public and tell them where I found it. That is not the answer with how to protect them. You know, you've yeah. got to put infrastructure in place in order to ensure the ongoing safety of these three animals should they be thylacine. And the best right. way to do that and again, I'm not trying to create a conspiracy theory. I'm just giving you a logical explanation. The best way to do that is discredit it and go, ah, it's bullshit, guys. Don't come here. Don't look over here. There's nothing to see here, right? Because then people don't freak out. If I find out there's a thylacine on March 1st, I'm getting on the next goddamn plane to Tasmania to go film and see that thing. And who everybody is, you know, everybody right. in our field is doing that. Everybody who wants to get a picture of one, everybody who's obsessed with this creature. And as we know from the viral YouTube video, that's a lot of people are going to be going over there. There's going to be pressure applied. I don't believe the argument that there's going to be trophy hunters chasing them down or any bullshit like that. I just think that people are going to want to go there and see it and contribute. And you're going to have this Disneyland effect of influx of people that are going to scare it or, or push it out of the habitat or destroy the habitat or, you know, stomp on its, its den or God knows what. And that is the wrong way to protect it. So yeah. if you're put in this situation, discrediting it, keeping it hush hush and building the infrastructure before announcing it to the public to ensure the animal's safety would be the best way to go about it. Interesting. <clears throat> Interesting spin. Yeah. So what's your prediction? So in just a couple of days, we're going to get these photos. They're going to be released to the public trail camera stills, right? They're stills, not video. I believe they're stills. Yeah. That was what the video said. The YouTube All right. Video. So let's go with some predictions. Peter, you go first. What do you think? What do you think we're going to see? <clears throat> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful, but I, I don't think that it just sounds, you, you basically have a seasoned scientist who has kind of discredited it versus 
essentially a 55 year old. I, I, I think it's going to be found to be not a thylacine. If I'm honest, I think that, yeah, my prediction would be that it's, I think it's not going to look like a patty melon. I don't think it's going to be, as he said, where you see the adults and you can't tell, and then you see the baby and it's just definitely a thylacine. I I don't think that's going to happen because then Nick Mooney would have, Nick Mooney would have had to just say, yeah, it is. Right. Um, Because he knows that they're just released the footage if he, you know, so. I don't think we're going to have anything definitive, unfortunately. And the other clue is that in the second press release from Neil, he didn't say, hey, I've got seven people who said, yes, it's a thylacine. He said, I've got seven people who don't think it's a patty melon. So, right. you know, that's uh, that's my prediction. What do you think, Forrest? Interesting. Yeah, I think that, of course, if you're a gambling man, if you're playing the odds, right, playing yeah. the statistics, the odds of it being a thylacine are tiny. And that's, you know, you couple that with the fact that Nick Mooney, who, again, as I said, I believe as being a very reputable, credible biologist. I know him personally. He's a good colleague. I totally believe him when he says it's not a thylacine. Now, there is that minor chance for an ulterior motive, as I explained. But I think that the odds of it being there, I I don't think we're going to see anything definitive. I think we're going to see a bunch of a bunch more blurry, crappy, cryptic photos, you know, maybe some bad shadows and a stripe and go, hmm. Yeah, this this old story again, unfortunately. Yeah. And I think Neil's enthusiasm, and it goes to show you kind of how well the human condition works, because Neil's enthusiasm totally had me convinced. You know, when I yeah. watched that YouTube video, I was like, yeah. it's been done. This is phenomenal. Oh, my God, this is huge. <laughs> and that all boils down to someone just being super confident and enthusiastic. And at the end of the day, I think we're going to see some more blurry pictures and have no concrete answers. So stay tuned. We will definitely do another part to this, uh, a picture review yep. after uh, they release the photos. We'll, we'll go in some real depth on that one. And uh, I think also we should, we'll, we'll reach out and see if we can get uh, Nick Mooney maybe to do a podcast with us. Yeah, he's just I'll reach out to awesome him about guy. it. That would be awesome. Yeah. It'd be amazing. Totally. Hey, if you like these types of vids, tell a friend, subscribe if you haven't, and pop a like. I mean, it's, you know. You get 1,000, 1,200 people watching these, like 80 people liking it. Just like it. It takes two seconds. <laughs> yeah. And let us know in the comments what you think about this whole thigh the scene saga. Do you agree with the uh, broologist here and the rest of us? Or who knows? Maybe it, maybe it will exist. Let us know in the comments. Didn't you start a thylacine channel in the Discord too? <clears throat> oh, yeah, I did. Join uh, Thylacine Watch in our Discord, HTTP colon forward slash whatever the hell Jesus it's just Christ. wild times dot no club. one's doing that yeah wild times <laughs> dot club and you'll be on the discord join it up i'll put a link in the description of the video but definitely let us know what your thoughts in the comments we love yeah. to hear your thoughts sayonara <laughs>